Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many more. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Well, hello, everybody. Hail and welcome back to a different sort of layout, a different sort of format, as you can see. Um, still got the intro, still got the uh, ha- uh, housekeeping type stuff that you saw already, um, but I'm playing around with um, how I uh, record my solo podcasts and in-person guest podcasts going forward, should I ever have any. Um so hopefully for those that are watching this, you know, whether you're getting it on YouTube or on the Spotify platform, uh, hopefully this is an enjoyable thing. I might have to play around a little bit with the lighting, but I kind of like the um, dark ambiance. <clears throat> um, you got my incense burner over here, which I am about to actually just go ahead and light because... It's not going to be a very in-depth podcast today. I just have one thing on my mind. I always say that, right? I always say that it's not going to be a long one, and then it turns out, you know, to be a a regularly scheduled program, a regular length program. Is that going to stay? Yeah, I think it might need a little touch on this side. This is a cedar aroma that we're burning today. There we go more satisfied with that okay so this is a cedar aroma that we're burning today because i thought that it would be a great um aroma to usher in the autumn season um we're fastly approaching what uh here in the northern hemisphere a lot of folks um acknowledge as the uh fall or autumn equinox or solstice or what have you so we've got uh, we actually just um this past weekend uh we just had the 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 full moon for this month so you know the nights have been getting cooler the days have been getting still warm but not as oppressively humid or or you know hot in that way and i felt like you know cedar was a good uh was a good one to to bring in to the podcast to kind of usher in that um you know time of welcoming in the days of darkness here today with me i actually got this brand new cup that i'm really digging um this was made by fjallvatir workshop who um, supplies so much of the uh, accoutrements that you see around me including this uh, incense burner the drum in the back the little hammer uh, rattle that you see and some of the other items that um, you might have seen or have had uh, or I have had featured in other podcasts and other my video content on the Midgard Musings YouTube channel. But um, needless to say, this is phenomenal. This is my new daily drinking vessel. Um, Right now, it's just got some tea in it. 
but this is um, a cup that can be used for, as he says, hot and cold beverages. Um, this is a cold beverage for right now. It's, it's cold tea. Uh, but I've also got my scotch here. Don't worry. We, we, we never um, podcast without it. Unless the occasion or the, or the place calls for something uh, of a less alcoholic nature. So I want to talk about that here in just a moment. And kind of give you guys something to look forward to. Upcoming. Um, so at the time of this podcast being recorded, I am in the week of uh, looking forward to welcome the uh, gentleman who has been a longtime supporter and follower of my channel, Midgard Musings, and uh, by default, of course, a follower and a guest also on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. So uh, my good friend from Missouri, Patrick Walsh, um, will actually be coming out this week. And if you're watching this podcast, he will be arriving tomorrow from uh from missouri and uh we got a really nice and exciting and fun podcast that we're going to be having in person um at the barfield crescent park um we're going to be recording there he's going to be talking about his his high lung experience um so really excited to hear him talk about that in front of all of us and uh do this this podcast not in this backdrop but in the backdrop of nature or at least you know, the park, as it were. So because it is a, um, you know, a, a, a place of public happenings and uh, things, people come and go with their families and stuff, we cannot have alcoholic beverages at the park, so I will not be able to partake of scotch. Uh, but I will have my cup or, 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 a, or, a, or a horn or of sorts with other um, beverages of uh, refreshments and things, so we'll definitely be partaking um, of the non-alcoholic drinks, but that's for next week. As long as I'm in the confines and the safety of my home, I will drink and partake as I see fit. Um, but yeah, this is, again, just kind of like a a new and different thing. I'm, I'm you know, trying to figure out uh, the future of the podcast and how I'm going to be recording stuff. I've got some really um, neat things that, that, that other people have helped add to the podcast in terms of like outro content and things that are going to be added to the end of this video, which I'm going to be playing around with today. So uh, I'm rambling on about stuff that doesn't really matter to you folks. So what are we going to be talking about today? Um, we're going to be talking about letting go. Um, we're moving in again to the darker times where the sun does not um, have as much time in our skies as it, as it usually does. Of course, we're hitting into that uh, longer nights, shorter days time of year as, as it happens every year. Um, and so we're, we're uh, I'm, I'm at least experiencing some things now that um, one might say are dark times, you know, moving into to dark times. Um, but at the same time, they are necessary happenings. They are necessary things to allow for old things to die and new things to, to, be, bur to be birthed or born and, and manifested, as it were. Um, so again, there's, 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 this, like, this, there's a conundrum to it all with um, you know, allowing things to grow while also letting things die. And, and one of the things that... Um, is, is hard for me as of late that I wanted to just kind of talk through today and talk about today is, you know, letting go of the things that you feel you have invested so much into, um, whether it be physical growth of things, you know, whether you've tended to, a, you know, crops or built a structure or any other sort of, you know, tangible physical things, you know, there are times or there, 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 come, there comes a time or there comes times even where uh, all of the work that you've put into something, all of the effort that you've put into something is not reaping the reward. Um, it's not bringing forth the fruit that you so desperately want to have it produce. Um, it's not achieving the goals that you set. Um, despite your best efforts, despite all of your hard work. 
And so one has to sit back and decide, okay, well, do I, do I have, is it because I'm doing something wrong, right? Is it because I'm maybe not watering things enough? And maybe it's because I'm using the wrong lumber. Is it, you know, is, am I doing something wrong or have I checked all my boxes? Have I dotted all my I's? Have I crossed all my T's? Um, and is the failure to produce um, due to other things that are on the other party's side, right? Is it because it's, 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 it's just not meant to be, you know, like no matter how much I want to grow coconuts, um, if I live in Canada, I'm just not going to be able to grow coconuts despite my best efforts. The ground is just not conducive. It's not rich enough. It's not climate, uh, you know, climate speaking, climate wise. Um, it is not conducive to, to growing a tropical plant when you're in a northern environment, right? So are the things that we are doing, or the things that I'm doing, um, despite my best efforts, right, it's just not conducive, it's just not working. And I think some of the hardest decisions that we have to make <clears throat> when we sever those ties, when we cut loose from the thing that we've put so much uh, time into, that one of the hardest uh, moments that we reach is realizing that I can't do any, I can't do anything else, I can't. I want it to work, and it's just not meant to be. It's just not working. You know, and I think that so much of, of, of myself, at least, as, a, as a, the kind of pagan that I am, right, is that I, I, uh, I believe that we have, or that I have, a lot of control in the here and now. I, have, I feel like I have a lot of um, say-so in the way things pan out. Um, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very um, transparent and very real with you guys here today in, in the sense that that is not always the right way to, to you know, to, to think. We don't have control over everything. We don't have control over a lot of things. Um, and that can be tough to, to face. That music can be tough to, you know, to dance to, as it were. Um, so the types of things that we can't control are, first of all, other people, you know, um, and when someone like myself who is, um, serving in a position of, of, of a leadership role within the pagan community, within my own small inner circle tribe, um, it's not always, it's not about controlling things. It's not about, um, being like, uh, being over certain things or certain people um but you kind of expect right when you when you lead by example when you do things that show results and when you do things that um provide a uh a, a, a result right or, or, or bring about certain um end goals right you 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 almost expect that when people see that that it inspires them to want to do the same thing. And so you're not necessarily controlling what other people do, but by your deeds and by your actions, it inspires them to do things that align with what you're trying to accomplish. And that's just not always the case. Not everything that we do is going to resonate with people or speak to people in a way that reaches that, that result, right? No matter how much we try, no matter how much we, we aim to to do that. And that's kind of where things are at for me with my tribe, right? Working hard to build something, working hard to, I guess, you know, and I've always said, and, I, and you know, if you, if you listen to any of my podcasts or anything on my channel, like the whole like building thing, like build a community, build a tribe, build a this, build a that, right? Um, I use that term and then I always come back and I'm like, ah, you know, I almost really hate even saying it like that because it, it seems so, you know, uh, methodical so so mechanical so non-organic um but you know the more i think about it i think that you have to you have to build for for things to 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 be a certain way you have to have control over the, the way things are built you have to have your hands in it um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing but you want to you know allow the thing to grow you want to allow it to cultivate and and and, and you want to nurture it along its way so uh, maybe nurturing and, and helping it grow is, is, is better, but there is definitely, I think, part, uh, the more I, you know, think about it, there, there, there's more um, to be said uh, about the whole building thing, 
than I may have uh, alluded to in the past. So building community, building tribe, nurturing that growth. I've really faced a lot of, of, of uh, challenges recently where the growth is stunted and the growth is sometimes being choked out by weeds um, and things. And uh, man, sometimes you got to get in there and you got to hack out, you know, chop down some of that, uh, some of that bad growth or some of that, you know, you got to, uh, you got to weed the garden. And inevitably, um, if, if, if it's gotten so overgrown, if it's gotten so choked up with the weeds, you know, sometimes you just got to go in there and just start from scratch. Just, just go in there and, and say, I'm done with trying to save this plant. I'm done with trying to save this. I just need to tear it down, pull it out, rip it out and start from scratch. Um, and we are in a spot, we have in a, we have kind of reached the position, my tribe, clearly the folk have, uh, reached the position where, you know, certain elements or certain aspects of, of our tribe have needed to be ripped out, removed. Um, and maybe that, that may be a harsh, uh, comparison, uh, to what I mean by, ripping out. It's not like, you know, we're going in there and violently just saying, get, get out of here, be done with it. But we're, we're reading the writing on the wall. We're, we're, we're seeing the signs and we're reading the omens and we're going, okay, it's time to, to move on. Um, I recently saw something in, um, on the, uh, funny enough, it was on the, the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, um, series on Amazon, which if anybody's kind of caught that recently and uh, been watching it. The last uh, episode, episode three, was the episode um, that introduced us to the island kingdom of Numenor. Um, so I'm not going to give away like spoilers um, or whatever, but there's a line in this re most recent episode um, which made me think, right? There's the, these people are island people. They live on an island, and, and the sea is. Um, uh, a, a big part of their culture, big part of their life. And it made me think of the Northern European, Scandinavian people where the sea was so much a part of their life, where they would sail and go and just, you know, discover new places, raid, right? All of these various things that they spent time on the sea. Um, but this line in this, uh, this episode made me think about its application and other aspects of, of, of life and the, the line was like um, the sea is always right you know and I got to thinking how y you could you could apply that to so much of nature and the wild you know the forest is always right the river is always right the trail is always right the mountain the valley the desert the hills there it is always right which is to say that as much as we are a part of these environments and as much as we put ourselves into these spaces to right to uh, you know reconnect and, and get back to um, our roots our primal primordial roots um, we are still at the whim of, of whatever happens out there a storm pops up right um, a tree falls down a wild animal comes across our path right the, the wild is always right because the wild has no order. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. There, the, the, the sense of order, the, the, the order of tribe, the structure of like civilization, the, the way society over centuries, over millennia have, have developed, um, the order of the wild and the, the law of the jungle, as it were, is uh, it's, it's much more fluid and it just it goes with what it goes with. And, and we... Um, when we when we enter into that space and when we go out and we adventure off into these places, we are we've got to play by those rules. There is no, you know, you don't just uh, <clears throat> I like you know the sea is is becoming boisterous, right? Or the sea is becoming a, a storm, and you you can't just say, oh, hold on, hold hold on a minute. Let me let me let me lower my sails. Let me you know anchor. Let me adjust my settings. Let me do something to adjust. hold on just a minute. Give me a minute. No, you are now in the middle of it. You know, you, you walk through the trails or you walk through the river or you climb the mountains and you, you know, 
encounter something, you don't just tell a bear, uh, hold on a second, let me get up this tree, or let me give me a 50 yard head start before you, you know, come and maul my guts out. Um, the sea, the wild, the, the, the winds, the, the, the storm, every, it's always right. Um, and it kind of goes back to the whole, like, what is right and what is wrong. I mean, when a storm comes up, when a, when a wild animal in, encounters you and, you know, uh, looks to you, looks at you as, as their prey, or if you trip and you fall and you, and you hurt yourself out there because of, you know, uneven ground, it's all these things that is right for the wild. The wild is always right. It's not right for you. Doesn't, doesn't bode well for you to encounter, you know, these things, um, and have to put up with it and have to deal with it. But that is what we must do. We must deal with it. And um, sometimes, you know, how does this how does this fit into what I'm trying to say, you know, here and now with uh, with, you know, things going on with with tribe um, or the tribe building or tribe cultivating and where, you know. I'm still trying to figure all that out um, because it's more metaphorical than literal. Um, but there are storms that come through, and there are things that come through that uh, cause disruption in the flow of things. And um, some of us in, in positions of leadership that in, within our communities, you know, it is uh, up to us, and people look to us as, as what's going to happen to us, what's going to happen to this group. What are we, what, what is, what are we going to do, and what are you going to do to, you know, address this? Now, in, in, in I think, a strong tribal uh, unit, um, yes, those leaders are looked to. Um, and then at the same time, the people that are in that established group band together. They come together, and it's not just on one person to fix the issue. It is on everybody to fix the issue, right? The storm comes through. It's not just on the chieftain to, to, to batten down the hatches. You know, everybody chips in, and everybody secures things down and everybody gets ready for the storm that is coming. And that happens, the, the reason that happens is because the, the trust that is established between members of that tribe, the, 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 the frith bond that has been established, the obligation that is established between not just members of the tribe, but between the chieftain and their tribe members and the tribe members and their chieftain and the other, you know, leaders of the, of the, of the group or whatever, however, you know, whatever the tribal structure, whatever the organizational structure of the, of the building or the unit is, I should say, um, whatever that might be, you know, yes, you look to your leaders to, to lead, but then you're also knowing that I'm, I'm going to be a part of this equation. I'm going to be working. And when you don't have that, when, when, when people don't step up and when people don't um, you know, work on, on things together as a unit, then you are often faced with, you know, decisions to be like, well, what are you doing here then? If you're not going to band together with the rest of the group and you're going to just be out there flying solo and being, you know, a maverick and being, you know, the, the, the captain of your own ship, uh, you know, isolated on your own island, then, uh, the tribe then has no use for, for those types. And I think there's a very fine line between knowing the importance of industriousness and being capable of handling stuff on your own. Uh, there's a fine line between that and then being on your own and not having anything to do with the tribe and the tribe not having anything to do with you. Um, that is dangerous. That when it, when, it, when it leans on the latter example that I just gave where, yes, you are strong as an individual, but you're isolated as an individual and you have nothing to do with the group and as the unit, um, then that, that's dangerous. Um, your people can't rely on you and then you therefore um, are not reliable and you can't rely on them to help you out. So when, when things happen, right, where it makes it manifest where, okay, I'm not, I'm not a part of this anymore. I can't be a part of this. I don't want to be a part of this. That could be, that's kind of where things are at for us right now, or for me at least, is that but I've put so much work into this already. I've done so much, you know, um, I've, I, 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 you know, I, I have so much invested into this. You know, how could I possibly walk away from this? How could I possibly let this thing be the, the end of it all? 
or at least the seeming end of it. It's tough. It is. It's 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 tough to separate yourself, withdraw yourself from that. But it, I think it's necessary, and I think it goes back to where I was talking earlier about how, you know, <clears throat> getting into the times of darkness and preparing for the times of darkness. It's we need to we need to kind of band together who we have available to us. We need to band together. We need to hunker down. We need to get ready for those dark times. And and during that during those those months of darkness or during that time of darkness and during that time where you know there's not a whole a whole lot going on um we can regroup we can we can come up with the the next steps and we can be active in that way you know may not be time to get out there and go on a lot of you know adventures or do a lot of physical work but there's there's a lot of inner work that needs to be done and i think that that's kind of what's important about the timing of things, where we are as a, where we are as individuals, where we are as a tribe, um, and, and, and seeing that growth through to the next stage, making it through the dark months, welcoming in, right, the, the winter nights and, and the winter months, um, and, and tending to the hearth fires, tending to the things that are close and nearest and dearest to us, um, and letting letting go um, of of those things that have served their purpose, that have run their course, that have given everything that we can get out of them, right? And if we give give, give, give without receiving anything in return. If the reciprocity, the gifting cycle, gave if none of that is, is occurring, then that is a telling tale in and of itself, right? If we are, if we are uh, not receiving in return the gifts that we've given, then it is time to stop you can't expect things to happen on a one-way street. You're only going to be moving in a, in a, in a, in a singular, single file, single line. Um, there's none of this exchange taking place. And what's really interesting, at least for me and, and for our tribe right now, or you know, in recent times, is that the reciprocity um, does exist, and it, and it is coming through in ways that I would not have initially expected you know i would not have expected to be engaging in um the, the gifting cycle in the ways that i have been you know um having patrick coming out you know this this man has spoken so well in uh, of, of myself of, of midgard musings and, and talking about how you know the information that he's gathered from what i do has been such like you know an influence for him, um, and it's humbling. It is it is genuinely touching to know that sitting in front of a camera for hours and and, and days and whatever cumulative time spent over the years has has impacted somebody, and then in in a, in in reciprocity and. In giving back in, in a way, it's it's not just well great you know you enjoy what I do and I'm I'm you know sharing what I know and it's benefiting you in a way, but to give something tangible to the man to ha to offer shelter to provide lodging to do the very thing that our ancient ancestors would have done in ancient times that you know provide a a, a, a place of refuge a, a, you know a roof over their head and travel to do that very thing that to me is like a, a great way to to show thanks and to give a gift in return yeah sure i i may have um been able to be of a, of a positive influence for you you know in your life um now let me repay you in thanks by giving you a place to sleep and giving you food to eat and giving you drink and giving you time to spend and giving you all these things right that are so meaningful that you can build a real relationship out of i never would have thought that this would have happened this way other ways um uh 
JM, Korpa Olufsen, you know, Bjelvetir workshop. This man has been, whether he knows it or not, kind of like a mentor. And, it, you know, he's said the same thing to me in the, in the sense that, you know, a lot of what I've done has helped him and we, we've helped each other. And so there's there's exchange of, of knowledge, there's exchange of time, counsel, there's there's um, exchange of physical goods, of 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 time of, of, of all these things right it's a living example of how reciprocity transcends just physical gifts right you give me this i give you that it goes so far beyond that um and it and it it establishes and, and builds a really strong bond between folks you know and it, it helps to, I think, assuage some of the anguish that comes along with letting go of things that you've spent so much time. Like, oh, man, I've spent so many years working on this pot, and now i got to break it. And now here comes a cup that serves a much better purpose, you know, that, that fulfills a much greater need that you can focus your efforts and your time and your energy and all that on. So, you know, it's 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 a... Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use like an example of just maybe it fits maybe it doesn't but I'm just, I'm gonna say it you know a couple of weeks ago I'm, you know I'm, I do these river walks I go out barefoot in the in the in, in nature and I and I get my feet my bare feet connected and grounded and anchored back into the earth and then I receive those energy and I'm, and I'm revitalized um, and I have this walking stick that I was using and it broke right it it, it snapped in half almost uh, and it served its purpose and it was almost hard right yeah it's it, just a stick can find another one right but it's the whole like I've, I've walked miles with this thing I've, I've swam with this thing I've gone places with this thing that now I can't go anymore but I had to let it go it, it, it's done it served its purpose I, I let it go and I sent it down the river and the river current carries it to wherever it's, it ends up um, to fulfill its next purpose all right it's not gonna its next purpose is not going to be to provide stability when walking but its next purpose is going to be to provide you know um structure or or materials for perhaps you know um a river creature or, or, or something to to build a shelter with or or it's going to decompose and it's going to return back into the earth from whence it came and it's going to again the whole gifting cycle i think it, the way it works in that way if you think about it um it it, it, it completes the cycle so in the literal sense, I've recently had to let go of things that I've put some effort into and, and that have gone with me in ways that I can't ever forget. Metaphorically, I have had to let go of things and let go of, of relationships in a way that have hurt to do so because that's, that, 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 that has served its purpose. It's, it's, it's run its course. Now, the neat thing about it, right, is that, you know, some of these types of things, some of these, like, relationships and, and, and affairs with, you know, tribal members and, and whatnot, um, I don't feel like those types of things are like, well, I'm never going to see that person again. I'm never going to encounter uh, that person again. But I think that the next encounter, the next stage of things, should it ever happen, is going to be so much different um, because of that rebirth, because of that renewal, because of that recycle um, stage if it does if it happens if it doesn't then it, it truly has you know run its course and there is nothing left for for us to 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 be a part of you know and I, and I try not to dwell on that because again the more I think about you know the specifics of it all and the more I think about you know the hurt or the anguish of, of letting go right you can get lost in that. You can get really, you can get stuck in that. You can get muck, you know, stuck in the muck. You really get bogged down into into all that noise. And if you're bogged down, if you're if you're stuck in the mud, um, you're not moving forward. You're becoming stagnant, and you're letting that thing be the be the thing to control and rule, grow, you know, uh, and prevent uh, uh, ultimately prevent growth from happening. So at certain points, and at, and, at, and, at, and at a point, it's important to recognize and, and, and understand you have to let go. 
learn what you can out of the whole thing, right? Um, which I have. I've, I've, I've taken a lot of long, hard looks at myself because I, I, I am the last person to let anything go because I feel like there's something to salvage because, again, I feel like I got control. I have some sort of I – ha, I have to have some sort of control over the situation, right? I have to be able to say that I've done everything that I can. And if I haven't, then I've failed. And I haven't learned everything that I can out of it. But it, you know, sometimes you need outside third-party perspectives to be like, hey, man, you know, you, you're, you're kind of beating a dead horse here. You're, you're, you're trying to do more than what is warranted. You, 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 you need to step away. You need to move on. It's hard. At least it's hard for me. It may be hard for a lot of us. But don't feel like you're being remiss when you let go. Don't feel like you're um, not giving it your all when you walk away. I think so much what's wrong in our society now is that guilt culture reigns and runs rampant. Um, this whole... <clears throat> Yeah, guilt culture, cancel culture. There, there's a lot of things that are happening now in, in modern time. Uh, the way our, our culture has evolved and, and, and stuff is, is, is to put the blame on people when there's no blame to be given. It's a fine line because I think that there's also some people um, and, and, and some approaches to things that remove responsibility and remove accountability not a lot of people are accountable of themselves not a lot of people are responsible of themselves they want to put the blame on others for the reason why things suck and why the things why things are bad and why they feel the way they feel there's a lot of i think um people who have uh gotten um or allowed i should say that there's a lot of people that have allowed their trauma to rule their decisions and run and run and, and ruin their decisions and ruin their relationships. Now, I'm not saying that um, people who have experienced trauma of any sort um, are not justified in feeling the way they feel. What I'm saying is that it is up to us as individuals. It is up to us to not allow that trauma to be the reasons that we're a bunch of assholes. You know. That that is that is tough. And that's a tough place to be. And that's a tough place tough place to find ourselves in, man. Um, but be accountable for yourselves. Be accountable for ourselves, right? Take up our responsibilities to be better, to be the best version of ourselves that we possibly can be. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be the best every single day doesn't mean that we're going to be the best of our version of ourselves every single day. There's going to be days where we really do suck. And there's going to be days where we really feel like we just don't m amount to much. And it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to feel those feelings. But I think, every, again, everything in context, right? Take care of it. Address it. And that's going to be another thing I think that we talk about on, on next week's podcast, me and Patrick, because... Um, this, this kind of touches on, you know, mental health. No, it doesn't kind of touch on mental health. It absolutely touches on mental health. And I think Patrick is going to be able to really, um, provide some dialogue between the two of us that, that when we're sitting there getting ready for our park moot while he's here in Tennessee, um, we're going to be able to, to, to talk about that. And we're not going to have like a time limit on things. We're going to, we're going to just ramble on till however long we, we want to ramble for. It's going to probably be one of the longer podcast episodes, I think, that um, are going to be um, released here. So just be ready for that. It could be, you know, an hour and a half, two hours long. We're not sure yet. We don't know. But we're not going to put a time limit on it. We're not going to stop just because it's, you know, I mean, we do. We will have the park to consider. So, I mean, if we start recording and it's, you know, three, four hours, we're going to be like, oh, crap. You know, we got to get ready for our guests to arrive. But. No, I think there's a lot of things to be said with regards to all of this, right? So, Patrick, you're going to be seeing this podcast before 
you know, you come out here or whatever. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about, man. We're going to be actually talking about it later this week. Well, we're going to be recording it later this week. And then you guys are going to see it next week. So prepare for the dark times. Let go. There are things that are coming into this season for a lot of us that are going to require us to withdraw, maybe disconnect, and just let go. Let go of that broken staff, man. You've walked along many roads. You've traveled many miles. You know, it's time to it's time to cash it in. It's time to cash out, maybe. It's time to move on. And it's time to let go. And letting go doesn't always mean a bad thing. It's not inherently bad to let go. It's not inherently bad to say I'm I'm done. It's just what we gotta do sometimes, right? So that is today's ramblings. Um I think that's all I really wanted to say. Um, I hope you all enjoyed, again, the kind of different layout, the different format. I'll figure out the lighting situation a little bit better for future podcasts, but I, I think that the the uh, the ambiance that's set in the minimal lighting right now is, is, is good. Um, anyway, but I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, be sure to comment. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, as always, to all of these videos. The algorithm is a weird... Uh, deity to appeal and appease to um, and I do my best to try and get all this content out to all of you um, and appease the algorithm gods uh, in a way that does that um, but the way that you can help is to comment engage share upvote um, just just be present with it um, so yes do all the things be sure to check the link tree link note uh, in the description and show notes so that link tree link is going to have all the ways that you can support this podcast and support midgard musings as a brand and as a whole so like follow share subscribe follow all that fun stuff if you want merchandise uh click the link tree link for the sh uh, spring store that's annotated in there as well it's all there just click the link tree link you'll find it all um, but that is all i have to say for today looking forward to the next episode with patrick coming up here next week so let us know what you think about this. If you guys want to chime in and share your thoughts, you can always do that by calling into the podcast. It's 615-671-9832. Uh, you can write in MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. You can comment on this video. You can at me on Twitter. You can DM me on Twitter. You can DM me on Facebook. Still trying to figure out the whole Instagram thing because apparently none of what I share or post on Facebook is getting out to the Instagram folks. So if you are still following uh, following Midgard Musings on Instagram and you're hearing this now, please don't unfollow me. The page is not gone. It's still out there. just need to figure out some of the technical bits on getting it reconnected to my main posting platform, which is Facebook. All right. So thank you all again for tuning in today, listening and watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. And until we talk again, may your ancestors always smile upon you. May the gods continue to notice you. Take care.